Welcome everyone to episode 281 of Aussie Tech Heads. How are you tonight? Thursday, the, where are we? The 15th of March. Halfway through March, nearly Easter. How are we going? All right. Got another big show for you this week. And I know if you're watching on the video, I'm a bit, my, my head's a bit bright. But uh, that's just too much light coming in. And uh, typical Thursday, everything decides to uh, pack it in again. But anyway, we're off and running now. All right. What's been going on? I don't know. How are you going in the footy tipping comp? Um, we just had a little chat to Eric. He's, he reckons he's going all right. I'll have to check up on that later. Uh, no, Will tonight. Will is, uh, I don't know where Will is, but he, he said he, he was working or something. Something like that. Anyway, no Will tonight. Uh, what else has been going on? Nothing much. All right, Eric, how are you going? Good, mate. How's it going? Hello, chat room. Hello, lounge. Hello, viewers and listeners. I'm going well. Thank you very much. Oh, that's good. That's very good. And what have you been up to this week? Oh... Uh, work obviously and uh, trying to fix mix minus but that's another story for another frustrated conversation right <laughs> and um, what else um, I don't know hating Wayne Swan that's in the name of my new band hating Wayne Swan yeah right <laughs> and uh, and today my server at the office got upgraded Nice. Why? Are, yeah, right. I was just going to ask you why you're not in the cloud, but I think I know the answer, so I won't ask. Uh, all right. Why I'm, not in, why I'm not in the cloud? What do you mean? Why you got a server? Why don't you just host everything in the cloud? Oh, right. No, I can't host things. Certain information I cannot host in the cloud. Yeah. Confidential. And especially now that things are like Telstra and that, they're trying to host it all overseas and emails and stuff. Jeez. Naughty, naughty, naughty. That's right. Naughty, naughty. That's right. All right, where are we going to start tonight? Well, how about we start with uh, where you can find us? I've been giving the email address out for a while, but it's Eric, Glenn, or Will at aussietechheads.com.au. You can watch the video as you are now if you're watching it, or if you are listening, you can go and watch the video at youtube.com forward slash the secret hub, and there was a problem with that through the week as well. I'll tell you about that in a sec. Uh, and just go to the uh, aussietechheads.com.au webpage, and there's a, a multitude of things. There's, there's Garth. Remember Garth? He has a little iOS review every week, and he's... Uh, he is back tonight with another one, and all his reviews are archived on the site if you ever feel the need to go back and watch one by yourself. Uh, also, Eric's Audible Tips are also archived on the site. And you can also Footy Tip. Join the Footy Tip and Comp. The AFL Footy is about to start, so you're not too late if you want to get in on the ground floor with the AFL Footy Tip and Comp. Uh, join the Aussie Tech Heads one. Your, your tips are replicated back to the, the big sports bet uh, tipping comp, which enables you to maybe, if you're damn good enough you could win 200k so that's not too bad not too bad at all mm -hmm. and 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 spot prizes also so uh yeah that's all good now what else we got going you can watch us live as as a lot of people do at, at the moment live.thesecrethub.com and uh, watch the recording of the show live around about 7 30 p.m queensland time uh so that's no day, no daylight saving time that's 7 30 queensland time and also, if you want to ring in, you can ring in live through the show uh, via Skype and Skype into Aussie Tech Heads. Uh, create the contact and away you go. All right, don't forget the paper at paper.aussietechheads.com.au. And also, if you need a couple of little uh, news stories every half an hour, it uh, pops into your Twitter feed. Uh, just follow Aussie Tech News. All right. Now, let's, let's, let's get on to it. What can we start with? Let me tell you about my YouTube drama. Now, you might yes, have... Please. Yes, please. You might have noticed that through the week, the ep last ep last week episode two hundred and eighty was a while getting up to the web page. So that's because like we use uh, YouTube to host, and they they ping me, they ping me like that like a they drop me like a sack of spuds, like a school case. They drop me again, just like they did with AdWords or whatever you call it. So look, I was I was mighty upset, and uh, once again, so they don't like you, mate. They mustn't. Like they mustn't. They dropped me because uh, they reckoned that I, I was matching content, you know. So uh, I think they one of the ones they didn't really didn't like was the episode when Steve Jobs died. I played a couple of minutes from the Stanford address, and yeah, that matched. And uh, I, I thought it was all right because at the time it says you know you've matched your content, you don't need to do anything. It's just that we're going to put Stanford ads all over the place when people look at your video. So well, yeah, well that's all right, no worries. But I guess that uh, as time went on, there may be a couple of other little videos that I've played, you know, in the show from YouTube uh, that just crept in and someone and the content is matched. And so they thought, well, too many is too many. It's probably all a computer doing all this and too many is too many. So anyway, they, they pinged me. They wouldn't let me upload any more than 15 minutes, which was a bit of a hassle because the show goes for an hour. 
And so, yeah, so that sort of held things up. I, I tried to embed other other ways and other things. It just wasn't happening for me without spending a lot of time. And uh, so I, I appealed to YouTube. I sent them an email or sent them a, an appeal form or whatever. And I said, listen, I'm, anything that I use is used under the fair use. And it's not uh, used to... Um, well, you know, to make money or anything like that. It's used under fair use. And plus, we are news slash reviews uh, podcasts. So we should be allowed to use it under the copyright legislation in Australia, and which is probably replicated in the US. So then another couple of days went past, and lo and behold, I'm back on. So I was happy. Start of the week, unhappy. End of the week, happy. So I'm back on, Eric. So it, the episode was uploaded. It's back on the, the front of the web page. Winning. 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 Tiger blood. Winning. Winning. That's right. That's right. So, uh, yes, I was whole happy. But, geez, I tell you, look, I understand there's probably not Google or YouTube that are really trying to come down hard on all this stuff. It is the content, you know, uh, owners. They're forced, they're forced it to be this way. But, uh, but I'm, I'm just happy that I'm, I'm able to appeal. And even though if I just got rid of all my match content because I've appealed it and just g- gave some excuse, then that's probably uh, all that it's taken. And the little computer algorithm has gone, okay, now he's got none. So uh, we'll reinstate the account. So... Um, but still, might have to have another have a uh, backup plan. I'll uh, have to think about a backup plan for future, just in case. Yes, that's a good idea because you just never know. That's right. Well, uh, heaps of things have been happening this week. I suppose, Eric, you, you'd be the, you'd be a good one to talk about the the most exciting news that probably gives <laughs> for some <laughs> that makes you quiver at the knees. <laughs> <laughs> What Steve Jobs is alive? Oh, praise! No, <laughs> he's uh, now tomorrow or Thursday night tonight. Tonight at midnight is uh, the Apple iPad three goes on sale in selected stores. Bonanza. The bonanza. Now, what can you tell us about the iPad three tonight slash tomorrow? Are you getting um, one? I'm, I'm not getting one. Next story. Okay. Now HTC. <laughs> <laughs> No, we'll. Uh, we'll oh, look, 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 I, look, let's just be clear about this. I, I like Apple products, as most people that listen to this uh, show, podcast, um, know, but I'm not a fool. And I just don't jump on by every Apple product that they release. I've got an iPad one, and it does me perfectly well for now. And yep. um, a few people at my office, and I told them the same thing, and they said, yeah, all right, I'll give you three months. But, <laughs> but, but, but no, in all seriousness, I um, I don't, I I don't think I'll be getting. I'll probably get the next one in a year's time. You know, iPad four, whatever they're going to call it then, the new notebook or whatever they're going to call it. But you know, I just can't justify it at this point in time. If, look, if I didn't have an iPod one, I'd definitely go and get it. Definitely, because the screen mm. on this thing is reportedly just fantastic. Now, and, you t- know, and it's got nice little software programs on it, like iPhoto and all that sort of stuff, which is great. Mm. Now, uh, Telstra's going to open its George Street, Sydney, and Burke Street, Melbourne stores at midnight tonight. So that is actually 11 o'clock if you're in Queensland, but take an hour to get there anyway. So um, it, will also, <laughs> it will also retail a device through all the Apple stores in Australia tomorrow, starting <laughs> at 8 a.m. So Optus and Vodafone have, have confirmed they will stock the iPad from tomorrow. Customers have been able to pre-order the new iPad online since it's... Here we go. I've got the Telstra pricing. All right. It's just been re- just been released. Um, ooh, that's not bad. This, <laughs> this is very good. Well, another little quiver, Eric? No, I'm not, still not going to get one. No, no I'm still not going to get one. Um, on. All right. If you want the 64 gig uh, Wi-Fi and um, 3G... You will pay, if you want one gigabyte per month, which is probably not enough, you will pay $57 a month. Hmm. Now, look, I, I had a look at that uh, Telstra website today as I was looking through those prices. And, uh, look, I came across this, the shared plan. Do you know, have you got much info about the shared plan? You ever read about For the... Telstra? Yeah. No. So, apparently, it's like if you've got... Uh, a few people in your organisation, uh, I suggest you could probably... Oh, right. Yeah, I know how it works, but I didn't know they had it. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. So it's like um, uh, you could ha- you can have five, four, well, five plans with four gig each. Uh, so cumulatively, that's 20 gig. And then it would... So it, you can share amongst who someone runs out of this one, you can hook onto the next one. Well, that's right? right. Yeah, that's right. So so you can be, you can be a, a bandwidth hog 
and you can you can right. suck out ten gig and let the others let the other three just suffer with uh, split the other the difference between them. Yeah, but uh, yeah. well, the, oh, the, I'll just do a quick analysis on the on the cost of this. So let's assume one gig's not enough because you're going to completely you know go nuts on this thing, mm. uh, and you go to it, the extra ten dollars a month, you'll get four gig a month. Let's assume four gig a month is is satisfactory. At sixty-seven dollars per month times twenty-four months on a plan, a lot of people would go, "Why would I pay sixteen hundred dollars? Because that's what it's going to cost you over twenty-four months yeah. for an iPad." Yes. He said, "Well, hang on a minute. When you think about it, the iPad is nine hundred bucks. If you bought, you went to Apple, yeah. and bought an iPad, it's going to cost you nine hundred dollars, right? For yeah. this for this one, the sixty-four gigabyte one. Yep. You take nine hundred dollars off that sixteen hundred bucks. That's your iPad cost." Yep. And seven hundred dollars, seven hundred dollars, is your data well, yep. for the twenty-four month. That comes that comes out to thirty dollars a month for four gigs. Mm. Now that's pretty good. Yeah. Because in the end, that's what you do anyway, right? So if mm. you go to the Apple store, you're out of pocket nine hundred dollars. Then you go to Telstra and go, "Can I have a SIM, please? I don't want four gig." I'll say that's thirty dollars a month. Thanks. Yeah. And yep. it's gonna, over twenty-four months going to cost you exactly the same. The difference being though. If you went to Apple, you're out of pocket immediately nine hundred dollars. Yeah. Instead of spreading out the cost. That's right. Over twenty four months. Mm. And that's what makes it attractive. And thank you, Telstra. Well done. But also, I think that goes with the mobile phone plans as well. It's like you, exactly. You, it's exactly the same. Yeah. Like you'd be pretty. Uh, you you would have to be slightly. I'll use the word slightly foolish ne to never be in contract if you're having a smartphone or something because especially yes, you're paying especially the same. If you're with someone like Telstra, who's Service is fantastic. Why would you bother? You, yeah. you, it's a no-brainer. Go on a plan. Yeah, that's right. But uh, now, just uh, with the uh, with going back to the iPad thing here, the customers have been able to pre-order the new iPad online since it was announced last last week uh, through the Apple keynote address and all that sort of stuff. Now, Apple yesterday have confirmed that pre-orders. Can you believe it? Have sold out. Yeah, that's that's about. At a guess, I was reading this. Uh, it was it's about pre-orders. That's world well, not worldwide pre-orders for the countries that they're releasing it on tomorrow. That's around five million units. Jeez, gone. five yeah. million. Yeah. So those who ordered the the uh, iPad after March eight will be forced to wait another week for delivery. So it's not a lot of time. Yeah, but big deal. Wait a week. Now the new and iPad. Then when you get it, when you get it, it sits on your in your in your garage for two weeks before you open it. <laughs> well, it might do. It might. You're just trying to save your eyes. But the new That's iPad right. will arrive in New Zealand and several European countries from March 23rd. So we're pretty. We we must be pretty well respected by Apple to be getting it so soon. Would you Would you say? Yes. Yeah. They, they, we are worldwide. Apple and these statistics bear this out. Australia are the biggest. Um, what you call it? Biggest market. For first-time adopters, yes, yeah, well, well, for new technology, and then we're known for that because we're idiots. Mm. Oh, I don't know about that. I think it's, I think it's good. I think it's good. Uh, that, yeah, but yeah, the iPad three, look, it's a, it's a fairly well-worn in little uh, product now. I think if you haven't got an iPad, yeah, go and get one for sure. Look, look, yes, I, I was, as Eric knows, I was going over to uh, Apple tomorrow. I'm sort of having second <laughs> thoughts now because I'm thinking this joint is going to be. If you're going to go, go at lunchtime. I'll wait for the, the or else you'll be lining up. You'll be lining up. I'll wait for the frenzy and the, and the knee yeah. wobbling to to subside, and I'll <laughs> I'll go later. Bring a bibs. Bring a bib so you can stop the dribble. <laughs> oh, I will. I will. Yeah, I, I'll bring some sponges on the feet to mop up all the the drool. So, <laughs> but um, yeah. But to look, I'm going to go over tomorrow. I've been. I'm going to buy an Apple TV. I'm going to go and get one. Ooh. And yes. I think I'm going to just t test it out. Look, I'm quite aware that, you know, they're, they're not very diverse in the, in the format co slash codec uh, movies that they play. But uh, I'm confident, slightly confident. But what it does do is what it, what it does do is even though it's limited compared to a lot of people who like to tinker, what it does do, even though it's limited, it does it very, very well. But look, I, I am, as I was saying, I'm quietly confident I will be able to transcode on the server. To on, the, on the fly? On the fly to send it to the uh, Apple TV. I can al already, there's a, can you can you put apps onto the Apple TV? Do you know? Uh, what do you mean? iOS apps? Yes. Not yet. Because, Not yet. because but it, you know what you can do? What? You can get Kimmy's phone 
and you can download an app called Remote from you just go type in Remote on the App Store. Yes. And you can control yes. your Apple TV from your iPhone. Yeah, and it's, and it's that sort of integration and functionality that's turning me into a fanboy. <laughs> <laughs> but only for I the think. only for personal consumer reasons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, completely. I'm exactly the same. I'm quite agnostic. When it, the time comes, I'm like right now. I'm talking through this to the stream on a Windows machine. Mm. But either side of me is an iMac and a MacBook Pro. Yeah. So depending on what the job is that needs to be done, I will use the appropriate technology. I'm not a lot of a lot of people. We'll go, oh, I'm going to use a Mac, I don't care, I'm not going to use anything else, blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm not that narrow-minded, and I don't think Glenn is either. He will pick the technology that's right for the job, and I, that's how it should be. Yeah, so yeah, so that's right. And, uh, and look, I'm, as I was going to say, with my iPad, I can, I can transcode on the fly. I can send a movie from my hard drive at home uh, over the Wi-Fi or over the 3G, transcode it into any size, uh, any size and bit rate that I need it, uh, obviously, bigger if it's Wi-Fi, smaller if it's 3G, and and send it to the iPad and it plays. So I'm quietly confident I can do this with this Apple TV, but I'll, I'll obviously we'll let you know, let you know how I go. Well, you can. Oh, well, that's the other thing too. You control the Apple TV from your iPad or your iPhone. So. Yeah, and like for a little for a little uh, media center for a hundred bucks, like, geez, are you serious? Come on, that's good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, twenty to your you're paying twenty dollars less than I paid, and I've got the 720p model. You're going to get yeah. the one eight the 1080p model. So that's not bad. Yeah, are you going to upgrade? No. no. I can't, dude. Think about it. If I upgraded everything every time they came out, I'd be broke. Oh, I've, got three, I've got three Apple TVs in the house now. Yeah, right. What am I going to do if I buy another three? Yeah, I, I don't to, know. I have to freaking move or get a divorce. <laughs> yeah, probably divorce. That's what, that's, that's it's ridiculous. That's what happens. Yeah, so all right. So just moving off now on, uh, let's go to HTC, just, just on the other side of the fence. Yeah, HTC is rolling out ice cream sandwich to their smartphones, so that's all uh, interesting and and fun and exciting. Finally, yes. Well, I suppose finally it's about time it came out, isn't it? The uh, now there's there's quite yeah. a list of uh, phones that are going to be able to receive the ice cream sandwich, and some as old as the Desire 2010 Desire. So that there's the the Droid Incredible, HTC Amaze, Desire S, the HD Evo 3D, Incredible Sensation, Radar, Resound, and a few more. Thunderbolt, Vivid. Now, the ice cream sandwich rollout includes some of the older handsets, as we just mentioned. Uh, exact timings are yet to be confirmed, but as we know, the Sensation and the Sensation XE are the first in the line to receive the upgrade. And according to HTC, upgrades will be more widely available in the next few weeks. So, uh, But isn't it funny that when we say things like, as far back as 2010, October 2010, which is not even two years ago, right? It's October 2010, it'll be two years this October. So it's a, only a year and a half ago that it's old. That's old technology. But if yes. you had a car for 18 months, you'd mm. thinking it's only a new car. But then again, but then again, they're not bringing out six models of the car in a year. Well, that's true because so, uh, look at Android are just shocking like that. Because I think like every, every day there's a different phone. Well, you look at the, say, like with Intel and their chips, they're releasing mm. new ones quarterly. And, and so oh, if, are they really? Yeah, they've got qu they're, they're roadmaps quarters. So, oh, is that right? So wow. They're, so they're, they're, I didn't know that. I thought there was, there was yearly, like, like Microsoft sort of thing. Well, it used to, well, as far, when I last it went to... used to be yearly, didn't it? Didn't it used to be well, yearly? Well, the last time I went to some, some of the Intel uh, seminars or talks, that, yeah, there was like just quarterly roadmaps. This is going to be released then, and then this one's going to be released then. And wow, you know, so well, that's fantastic for us who only upgrade their computers every three or four years. Yeah, could you imagine the processor power in you know, if they're upgrading quarters, that's 16 quarters of mm. upgrades by the time I have to upgrade my computer again. That's fantastic. So, like, we're, with the upgrades, like, we're probably not talking like super, super, um, you know, differences. There's probably you know, a little, little tweak and a peak here. But, uh, but still, they've got a new model, if you know what I mean. Like, it's, mm. there's just new models, mm. and it might be spread across, like, new model for the Xeon and then new model for, like, the i3, i5, i7, but they're, yeah. all, they're, yeah. all, just, they're all just rolling off, you know? People need yeah. to keep so up. So if you buy a, an XPS Dell in March, we'll have this processor. If you buy it in June, we'll have a different one. Quite possibly. Even though it's the same computer, probably the same price, it'll just have a different processor that does a little bit more in this area or that area. Well, quite possibly. Quite possibly. Yeah. That's right. Well, that's fine. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not bad. That's all right. 
<laughs> but I think uh, I think it just means that yeah, so the technology is outdated really fast. But I think it's just because there's so much that comes comes out and the regularity of it uh, hitting the market. Yes. That like yes. if you if you got something bought something in January, like you're going to buy the iPad three tomorrow, but come come January right next year, well even, we might be talking about iPad four, and then that oh, then the iPad imagine? three is obsolete. Like I haven't had mine for a year, have I? I wouldn't have had that for a year. No, no. And that was the well. Tough. Mine is mine is not even two, mine's two years in May. Yeah. May this year, two years. Yeah. It's not even two years old. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. Still, it's still in good nick. There's not a scratch on this thing because I've always got it on a cover. Yeah. Um, and you know the screen is durable, as we all know. That got that Gorilla Glass on it or something, and it hasn't got a scratch on it. Mm. Just put the occasional Windex on it, and then wipe it down. It's beautiful. Oh yeah, nice, nice. Now, um, now sticking with the uh, Samsung, as we were just well, we weren't, but we, we can go to Samsung. <laughs> now, look, I've never heard of this little thing before, the Galaxy Note. Have you? Oh, uh, I've heard of it. Yeah, I hadn't, I hadn't heard of it. Leo's got one. And what does he think about it? He loves it. It doesn't look too bad. It looks all right, but you know what? As I've seen, I'm watching the screen now. Your screen that looks good. You know, you got you don't. Apparently, you don't have to use that stylus because you look like a tool head right um <laughs> you know i wouldn't you know you, you, you lose them all the time but nevertheless yeah. that's about the same size as the kindle fire right right yep seven inch or no smaller so it's a five inch screen okay try and hold that up to your face to make a phone call and not look like a tool <laughs> but the size I, of that thing but i suppose it's not meant to be a phone it's meant to be a, a, a but it note. is a phone but it but it, but it, I, <laughs> Well, you can use. When someone calls you, what are you going to do? I'm not answering it. I'm not answering it. I'm not here. Tell them I'm not here. <laughs> can you use the iPad as a phone? No. Well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Imagine holding the iPad up. I well, you can, you if can you do had, Skype. If you had earplugs in all the time. That's different. You know, you just press, click the little button, and you answer it. So yeah. look at the size of that thing. <laughs> But but it's, that's the purpose. That's the purpose. That's the purpose. So what we, is the purpose? Well, the Samsung has made a smartphone tablet hybrid Galaxy Note, yeah. and it's now available to Australian customers. Month after the device went on sale in the US and Europe, it will be available for purchase uh, this week from Optus and Vodafone for eight hundred ninety nine dollars. <laughs> Woo wee! Um, you know what? I I'll, I I, chal- I, ch- I, will, I challenge you, Mister Goodman. And we all know your experiences with Samsung. I dare you to get one. <laughs> Look, I dare you. I don't know if I'd buy that if it was $9. <laughs> I could. Well, I don't know. I just, you know, because, you know, at the end of the day, you don't want to have a, a little, you don't have an iPad, a laptop, a five-inch Galaxy Note and a phone, right? Yeah. And what they're trying to do is get to the market where people don't want a thousand devices, so they just carry one. Well, that's right. But yeah. when the phone rings... What the hell are you going to do? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's right. What the hell are you going to do? Yeah, so um, so Telstra said they're going to have it from April, but there's no confirm no confirmation on pricing. Samsung is touting the phone as a first in the newly created category, sitting in between a smartphone and a tablet, uh, with a screen of 5.3 inches in in HD. The phone also includes a stylus, S Pen, oh sexy S for sexy, I guess. Uh, take notes and annotate images and files on the screen. Uh, Samsung has confirmed that the Galaxy Note will be updated from Android 2.3 Gingerbread to uh, Android 4 Ice Cream Sandwich in in the coming months. The phone holds 1 gig of RAM, 16 gig of internal memory, and is powered by a 1.4 gigahertz ARM Cortex A9 processor. It is 9.6 millimeters thick and carries a 2 megapixel front-facing camera. Samsung's only competitor in this field is currently is an LG, which is the 5-inch Optimus VU. There you go. Mm. Nah. So, yeah. Nah, nah, nah. Not nah, for me. Not, not for me. Might be for other people. And you can buy one if you like. I won't judge you, but you're an idiot. But I won't. <laughs> I'll not get I a look. Can't, I can't see it. Yeah. Can't see it. Can't see it. Not you, a know, you, you know, you walk up to someone, oh, you happy to see me or is that a Galaxy Note in your pocket? <laughs> Yeah, always a stylus. Yeah, that's right. Is your stylus is still on? <laughs> Hello. Yeah. All right. Um. What? Well, have you got any other? You got any stories, Eric? Yes, I do. Uh, iPads in the UK. A glitch on the website meant that the supermarket chain uh, Tesco, I think it is, 
Yeah, Tesco, a big supermarket chain, probably the size of Woolies and Coles put together in the UK, started selling on their website iPads for seventy eight dollars. Yes. Instead of for seven hundred and eighty dollars, seventy eight dollars. So, it should have been four hundred and ninety nine pounds, but someone put forty nine dot ninety nine pounds. Oh no! So um, did that? Did, so did they have to honour those? They had, you know? they had, they had to sell them. Yeah, right. Right. Them. Right. Mm-hmm. There's actually until uh, they until they uh, discovered the er- the error, um, they had to do it. There yeah. you go. So look, if you if you look at just mentioning iPad again, if you're looking for uh, an unboxing of the iPad three, there is a Taiwanese or a Vietnamese video going around yes. on YouTube yes. that uh, the guys. I haven't have, seen it, but yeah, there is one. Yes. The guys got their hands on it and uh, mm. uh, and they've uh, got their hands on it all right. <laughs> <laughs> now with the we're just quickly with the iPad. Apparently, they're being released also in Big W and Dick Smith. Now, apparently, I've yes. heard rumours that the Big W are going to sell them. There's, they're, they're opening at midnight too. Two stores, I think, in, one in Melbourne, one in Sydney as well, but in the in the regional centres. But they're also they may be selling the iPads for forty bucks less than the Apple Store. So. Um, oh wow! Hmm. I heard that JB Hi-Fi might be discounting them as well. Yes. Well, they're, so they're, that's that's interesting. Yeah. So we can. You can well, it's going to be a frenzy tomorrow. You watch it. It's going to be all yeah. over the papers, and everyone's going to be commenting like, "Oh, these Apple fanboys, they're such knobheads." <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be frenzy. Whatever. I can't, I can't believe Whatever it. Whatever floats your boat. Can't, Whatever floats your boat. Can't believe it sold out. I just, I really can't. Not, not, not the three. Anyway, but anyway. I now, can't believe it. Yeah. Well, well, sticking with um, with with apps, and whatever. But uh, the, now the twenty fifth billionth app or download, twenty fifth billion yes. download, uh, is an app from Disney. I wonder if there's any uh, coincidence in that. But earlier this month... Yes. For people that don't know, Steve Jobs, or used to, now his estate or his wife, owns the biggest slice of Disney. Yeah. <laughs> so I reckon, do you reckon they might have brought the app store down or something, or they just made the story up? Like, brought it down, waiting for... Wait, and it's got some, some Disney do, I think do the download. Maybe they just um, had they had all the apps on there, but you can only buy Disney apps. <laughs> yeah, probably. Oh, see, we had a glitch in the system, sorry. We had a glitch, but you can buy this, this Disney app that you can buy. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but earlier this month, Apple announced that downloads of of apps had hit the twenty five billionth mark. The twenty five billionth app download was a game called Where's My Water, by featuring uh, Swampy, the alligator. Now this Who? What? Swampy oh, the yes, alligator. Yes. Now the game is a, is uh, different because Swampy the alligator is is a new character for Disney and built or created especially for the uh, for the app for the iOS for the internet there and you it go. hasn't appeared in any traditional films so that's um yeah there you go oh, that's interesting that's very interesting, interesting. <laughs> all mm. right all right well now, I'm just trying to find last week there was a story that I forgot to mention Forbes came out Forbes magazine forbes.com came out with the um, richest the richest 400 list yeah, and I don't know if any everyone saw this, but um, were you on it? <laughs> <laughs> I think I would have been on it for the most debt. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I can't I can't find a story now. If you type it up on Google, richest four hundred, uh, the richest Americans. Here we go. Um, it uh, what's it called Loreen Jobs, which is uh, what you call it, Steve Jobs's. Widow, obviously. Loreen. Loreen. Her name is Loreen. Yeah, right. Loreen. Um, she was on the list at, and I'll tell you where she's at, because she's now, okay, you keep talking, I'll find her on the list. Steve Jobs. Oh, that was last year. You think 39. That... Last year, Steve Jobs was 39. Yeah, right. 39 right. With yeah. 7 billion, but that's actually um, 9 billion now. Hmm. Interest and she was on it. I think she was about the same, the same number thirty nine. Because yep. the you know the, the the Steve Jobs trust or something. Oh, okay, right, right. Yeah, well, that's 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 good because because Steve when he was there he was uh, he was working for a dollar a year, wasn't he? So um, he, he was, but he had a lot of shares and he yeah, obviously yeah. had a lot of shares in Disney. Yes, yeah, maybe he was the twenty fifth billion downloader. <laughs> <laughs> when did well, they announce that? Was... Earlier this month. Oh no, 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 wouldn't have been him. He's been, he was finished. No, he's been gone since August, mate. It's been a while. Yeah, that's right. Well, all right. Now, uh, we're going to hear from Garth. Garth's uh, done Series 2 of iOS reviews. And he's, okay. he's, 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 um, he's on fire. And tonight, uh, we've got a nice little app 
that might uh, help you out with things if if it's suitable. So Garth, let's see what 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 app Garth has tonight. Okay, if you ever wanted to listen to your podcast faster than the normal drone that they sometimes carry on with, it can be very turn, turn it up a bit, mate. What do, you, what do you got, Garth? What do you got? Speed Up Player. Yes. Speed Up Player Pro. So for listening to... Um, look, a lot of the podcast apps have this built in. And in iTunes, you can go a little bit faster as well. You get, well, it, it calls it two time. It's about one and a half time or whatever it really is. But um, this one will take you up to a, a proper two and a half times faster. Um, really, you know, however fast you like, basically. Mm. Um, much faster than that. You're not going to be able to hear a thing they're saying yes. anyway. But, you know, the reason I, I really like this one is that it also supports Dropbox now. So nice. in, a really, in a recent update, they've added Dropbox support. Nice. So you can set it so that if you're playing music, it'll automatically put that at the normal speed. Oh, all right. Um, and for people who don't love iTunes in terms of syncing their music and handling music through iTunes, um, this is a handy way if you want to quickly drop something to have a listen to onto your phone just chuck it in your pub in your in your iTunes, in your dropbox folder on your mac or your pc whatever you've got yeah and then you can access it straight from this app yeah sweet yeah it is it's yeah. pretty pretty cool yeah that's not bad so mm -hmm. you can uh, listen to your collection at point at or half times so that what's that half times faster if you want to be able oh, extra to slow. type it out while you're listening, oh, I that, guess. That must be the study mode. I don't know. Why else the hell you <coughs> have half times? But there yeah. it is. For, for dictation purposes mainly. There you probably. go. There I'd, you. I'd imagine so. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so that sounds like not too bad. Like I remember uh, when I had my last iPod, I, iPhone, I mean, I had this old 3G phone mm. uh, before I got the Android. And, yeah, I used to uh, listen to the... Audio, uh, to audio podcasts, yeah, at the at two times, and yep. yeah, you could get through them much faster, and and it didn't sound like it was really that fast. It just no, it was well, good. It was good. Two times on the iPhone is not a real two times. They call it two times, but it's actually more like one and a half times. Mm. But um, this will, you know, you can do the. It's it's very you know you can go up by point two, point four, point eight. Yeah. Know. Yep. However fast you like, right? up to two and a half times faster. And that's two and a half, really two and a half times faster. Yeah. So, so I wonder um, how it differentiates yeah. between the, the music tracks and the... Just the tagging in iTunes, I guess. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. Yeah, right, you know right, how yeah. stuff, you know, audio track, M they're all MP3 files or AAC files, but they can be tagged as a audio book or a ringtone or whatever they're tagged as, yeah. Yep, and it's got a sleep timer. Yep. 10, 20, 30, 60, typical, 120. Typical sort of sleep timer thing. Um, but the real, yeah, the real things I love is the... the it's also good in that, um, you know, if you're listening to multiple books, you can have one app, this one will sync in one spot in that book. Yeah. And then you might be listening to another book through you, through actual iTunes music player on your phone. Yeah. So that way you're not jumping around. You can just, you know, if you want to get to one part in a particular book, I'll listen to this book in this app. Mm. So if I want to go and listen to that book, I just open this app. Sweet. It may not make sense to you <laughs> what I just said, but hey. So works for me. It works for you. <laughs> so uh, yeah, go and have a look at that. It's $2.99 or the pro yep. version. The pro version, yeah. Now, there's something I just saw here that I thought I should say. It uh, uh, was something. Oh, preserve the pitch and the tone. Yeah. So it doesn't come out like up. a chipmunk. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, good stuff. Not like those old days with the old tape decks where you sped them up and... <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so we know you're one of those. Yeah. Uh, our limitations, video tracks are not supported and does does not support DRM protected files. Yes. So uh, Never mind. maybe a couple of limitations there, but hey, yep. who the hell's got DRM protected files these days? I, I ask I don't me. know why I, you'd want to bother. Oh, no. But hey. Know. But anyway, that's no. a, uh, we'll talk about that later. But I, yeah, the speed up in the Dropbox, excellent. All right, good stuff. All right, thanks, Garth. And no thanks worries. For, thanks for popping in and we'll see you again soon. Good night. All right, yeah, so that's uh, not a little too bad of a lap. Have you heard of that one, uh, Eric? No, I have not. No, so you might go I have not. Go down and have a bit of a play with that one. I try. Well, I don't like listening to things that, and it sounds like a chipmunk. No, that's what that one does. It, it, uh, re, 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 it uh, keeps the pitch. Oh, good. I, I, I might try it. <coughs> yeah, I might try it. Well, it's, two, it's $3, but uh, they probably are like a little demo version or something like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now you could try it with an audible book if you if you got one of those books yes, that, can. that goes for six hundred hours. You may be able to, you may be able to speed it up a bit, but then why? Well, this spoil, one why won't be too it? bad because this one is only twelve hours. Oh, that's not in twenty five minutes. 
Oh, good. That's nice and short. So, uh, nice and short. yeah, it's uh, what have we got, uh, Eric? What have we got tonight? today? We have a book called Defending Jacob, a novel, and uh, I like legal thrillers, um, personally. And mm. I'll read a little summary and then we'll, we'll play a little grab. Andy Barber has been an assistant district attorney in his suburban Massachusetts county for 20 years. He's respected in his community tenacious in the courtroom and happy at home with his wife, his wife, Laurie, and son, Jacob. But when a shocking crime shatters their New England town, Andy is blindsided by what happens next. His 14-year-old son is charged with the murder of a fellow student. Mm. Naughty. Interesting. Mm, that's yes. a bit harsh. So let's play a little bit of that, shall we? You tell me if you can hear this or not. He was obviously a working-class kid determined to get for himself what so many others had simply been handed. In that way, and only in that way, I suppose, he was just like me. Now, a dozen years after he arrived in the office, despite all his quirks, he had made it, or nearly made it. Neil LeJudas was first assistant, the number two man in the Middlesex District Attorney's Office, the DA's right hand and chief trial attorney. He took over the job from me, this kid who once said to me, Andy, you're exactly what I want to be someday. I should have seen it coming. In the grand jury room that morning, the jurors were in a sullen, defeated mood. They sat, 30-odd men and women who had not been clever enough to find a way out of serving, all crammed into those school chairs with teardrop-shaped desks for chair arms. They understood their jobs well enough by now. Grand juries serve for months, and they figure out pretty quickly what the gig is all about. Accuse, point your finger, name the wicked one. There you go. Name the wicked one. Yes, there you go. So they, that sounds like a uh, nice little thriller to, to listen to on the lonely drive down the a dark country road. <laughs> yes, indeed. As the picture depicts not a dark one but a country road nonetheless but a country road all right that sounds good so if you want to get i think you can actually get that one for free if you haven't already joined up you can click on the banner link on the aussietechheads.com.au website click on the audible link and sign up and away you go you'll be able to uh, get that one for free or get another one of your choice over a hundred thousand titles over all genres and uh by by joining up with audible uh you not only help yourself to some great listening material but also help aussie tech heads uh as well Keep up the keeping the servers running, my aircon That's running, right. all and that sort will, of stuff. It will work on Android. There is an Audible app for Android. Yes, and and even if you wanted to, you could use the Speed Up Pro if you had to get through it really fast. It'd take Bingo. A, it'd take away the mis, mis, mystique of the storyline, though. But uh, it would. <laughs> but anyway, it would. You'd, you'd be right. You'd be right. You'd be you'd be, on, right. you'd be on fire. It's got some good ratings. Got some good ratings. Four star ratings. So that's uh, go and get it, people. All right, good stuff. Thanks, Eric, for that one. Now, look, I've got another little, uh, where am I? I've got another little um, video of sorts to show you. Now, we all know that if you ever tried to draw on the iPad or on a touch screen, there's always a lag where your finger is and, and, from, and then where the, the cursor or the, the spot or whatever was trying to catch up. Now, it's a 100 millisecond lag. Now, Microsoft has brought this down in testing environments, has brought it down to one millisecond. So that's almost instantaneous. So um, it might not appear for a while, but it's, uh, it's in the de developmental stages. But I'll tell you, it's good to know that, the, that Microsoft are in there giving it a bit of a slog, isn't it? Like, you know, like, not just I like hope they actually use this technology in the tablets that they produce. Otherwise, mm. what's the point? <laughs> well, yeah, that's right. That's right. So, look, I'm going to try, and I think I've got, I think I have got... A, a little uh, video here just to demonstrate uh, what's going on. So let's see if we can uh, see this. Yeah, I think we go to about uh, a minute. Here we go. Now, now I know guys on the podcast, this is going to be a bit boring, but, but as you can see, this guy is just about to come in with his finger, and there he goes. So that see the little square is sort of trying to catch up to the finger all the time, probably a, what one to two centimetre difference. Now he's going to show us that at 50 milliseconds. 
so the square's just just behind the finger. And now this is what Microsoft has developed one millisecond. And apparently you can actually like draw and everything that p p people have sketched and stuff. So there we go. Well, that's 10 milliseconds. That's still not one. That's 10. It gets even faster than that. So look at this. This video is on the YouTube. I'll probably get pinged for this one as well. <laughs> but um, there we go. Here's the one. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. So isn't that good? Well, maybe Apple should buy that off Microsoft. Yes. Well, they, they, they probably will. Oh, here we go. He's going to... Yes, this will be a good test. Yeah, so that's not too bad. That's it, not bad. They're just drawing with... Uh, I'd like him to use a stylus and see how quick it is. Because that, when you're taking notes you want, and you want to use a stylus because you don't want, a bit of, you don't want it on paper, that would yeah. be brilliant. Yeah. Well, that, that, there we go. That is, that's instantaneous. Yeah, that's pretty much instantaneous. One millisecond is, well, look, even 50 milliseconds is close enough to instantaneous. Yeah. So there you go. That's, this is footage now taken at eight. Yeah, there you go. At eight times speed. Yeah, yeah that's instantaneous. right there. But it's good. So look, let, let's just hope that um, Microsoft can develop this further and push it out to their tablets. And um, yeah, well, it gives everyone, you know, the, the competition breeds innovation. And innovation... Agree. Brings, Agree. Yeah, brings Agree. greater products for us. Oh. Speaking of Microsoft, back on the rich list, let's go through that quickly of all the Microsoft people on the rich list, shall we? All right. Bill Gates is still number two on $61 billion. Jeez. Keep in mind that he's given away already. He's already given away $60 billion. Okay? Oh, jeez. Keep that in mind. Who's number one and with how much does it say there? Carlos Slim and family, $69 billion. He's a telecoms uh, mogul from Mexico. I think he owns most of the Mexican. Uh, Warren Buffett is forty-four billion. Yeah. The gentleman behind the Louis Vuitton brands is number four at forty-one billion. Larry Ellison, Oracle, oh, thirty-six yeah? billion. I didn't realise he was worth so much. Wow. But good for him. Uh, who else do we recognise on this sh list here? Now, when was um, it? When did? It, when was this brought out? March. This is March two thousand and twelve. So this is this is probably a bit of a, a downsize because this would be after the GFC. They're probably worth more, double, like like two, oh, three years ago. I think they've recovered for quite a bit. No, they've recovered quite a lot lower than this during the GFC. Bill Gates, I think, went down to fifty-five million. Yeah, I think, I think <laughs> I think you might be right. I think I remember that figure bit and bandied yeah. around. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, who else we recognise here? Uh, Sergey Brin of Google, eighteen point seven billion. Uh, Larry Page, same, of Google. Jeff Bezos, Amazon, eighteen point four billion, good for him. Uh, Gina Reinhart, eighteen billion, Australia, of course. Jeez. Rich, richest person in Australia. Uh, who else we got here? Mark Zuckerberg. Well, we don't how know would, what he's really worth. How, how would she go, Gina Reinhart, go for the richest woman in the world? She is close to the richest woman in the world. Yes, she's. I think. She, I think she's number four. Yeah. Right. Nice. Nice. She's twenty nine richest. Overall, male or female. Yeah. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg, seventeen point five, but you know, only time will tell whether that will remain that way. Uh, you know, Bill Gates has been at that list for a long time. Mm. Michael mm. Dell, sixteen billion. Steve Ballmer, sixteen billion. Not bad. Yeah, yeah, a lot of money. Phil Knight, it? Phil Knight, the guy that owns Nike, fourteen billion. Yeah. Uh, Paul Allen, the other Microsoft um, co-founder, fourteen billion. Uh, the Mars Bar family, uh, about twenty six billion, no, forty billion in total. A lot of Mars bars in that. Yeah, a lot of them get their Mars bar up, yeah. <laughs> um, what else? What else do we recognise here? That's probably all. I, I recognise a lot of these, but our listeners probably only recognise the tech people. So yeah. I'll only read yeah. out the tech people. Yes. Marine Jobs is nine billion. She's one hundred richest overall. Mm, but nine billion. That's that's insanity, isn't it? It's insanity. Yeah, that's insanity. But, uh, but yeah, so moving on from there, we've got Firefox and Chrome. I think Chrome had a bit of a hesitation. They didn't want to move along with the, uh, with the new Microsoft GUI. Um, that what They were uh, Metro. They were, they were against the Metro. They weren't going to do it. I mean, now they have. They followed Firefox. Who's this, sorry? Uh, Who's Chrome. doing oh, Firefox? Right, right, yeah. right, right. So Mozilla has announced that uh, public alpha and beta versions will be available for the Metro, uh, the Metro UI, 
GUI in the second half of 2012. And a Google spokesman said, our goal is to be able to offer users a speedy, simple, secure Chrome experience across all platforms, which includes the desktop and Metro versions of Windows 8. So, um, so there you I go. I just don't like the look of that UI, that, that user interface. Look at that. That looks so infantile. It looks so kindergarten. Get it yeah. together, Microsoft. It's horrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't look the, doesn't look the best. Uh, it's been horrible. Perth-based IINet is the first telco in Australia to make plans to buy its own domain name. Uh, the, the the cost of their domain name is two hundred thousand. So that's for the oh, dot no, Nothing for them. So what would the, the domain name be? You just type in IINet and you're there. Well, I guess so. Oh, it's like instead of dot com, it's IINet. Right. Dot, dot yeah, IINet. It would be like uh, internet dot IINet. Yeah, yeah. So they're they're pretty uh, they're pretty confident that there's uh, that they'll get it. Uh, when you look at other places, things like the AFL, you know, they're they're in a competition with all the other companies in the world with acronym AFL. Yeah, right, um, AFL, yeah, NRL, AFL. That's right. Yeah. So uh, so that that's that's what they're doing. Uh, it's a, uh, what IONET said. It was a relatively cheap way to secure part of the internet. If successful, INET would control the, the, the domain name by the end of 2013. And Optus spokeswoman said it was considering a top-level domain. Telstra has confirmed it would also apply. Now, here's a little story. I don't know. It depends if you, if you like the old, if you're going to cry about it or not. But uh, Encyclopedia Britannica, we've probably all had a look at one. We've probably all touched I, one. My parents have still got the Encyclopedia Britannica that we grew up with. Right, right. It's out of date. It's out of date. Well, it is now. I used to do my, my science and, and other assignments straight from that. Well, I remember my dad, he had, he had his encyclopedias. Uh, he might still have them. But I remember looking at him, and they were from the 1950s or something. And, you know, you, you look... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, inter- don't look up internet oh. bloody and DSL in that one. Don't even look up computer. Not in there. Not in there. But anyway, no, it wouldn't be. Wouldn't no, be. it wasn't. They weren't. I looked. I looked. It's not there. So, anyway, Encyclopedia Britannica, after 244 years of referencing, the Encyclopedia Britannica has decided to stop publishing its famous and weighty 32 volume print edition. It's gone. It's gone. The firm, which used to sell its encyclopedias door to door, now generates about 85% of its revenue from online sales. And it recently launched a digital version of encyclopedias for tablet PCs. So obviously they're trying to uh, obviously, yeah, get a get a hold of Wikipedia, make sure they don't get too far out of control. And uh, look, I suppose you know if you were as a student or if you were an academic, you would probably rather rely on the Encyclopedia Britannica than on Wikipedia. Mm, uh, yes, I prob- would definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Look. Yeah. Look. Encyclopedia Britannica. Look, I I remember them at school. You know, but. Uh, yeah, so that's just another another uh, another casualty of the digital age. But anyway, things now, move on. Did you used to photocopy? Did you used to have copyright laws at your library when it came to photocopying um, books? You know, stuff out of the Encyclopedia Britannica. Oh, I think it was. Yeah, there were some fluff things about you can't do more than ten percent. You had to. I think we had to pay something like twenty cents a page. Yeah, and something like five cents a page would go to Encyclopedia Britannica. Mm. Whether or not they passed it on, on it's yeah, debatable. That's what a wank. But anyway, um, but I remember at school, like where we used to just, I used to photocopy old books. I didn't care less, you know, and because and it didn't cost anything because we found out a way because you know they had the coin slot on the side of the machine yes, on the side yes, of thing. Yes. Well, what we used to do is if you turned the machine off really fast, it'd give you a free copy. Oh. So, well done, so, hacker. Back then, you were hacking back then. That's right. So, uh, so yeah. So, you know, not, not no consideration for possibly just blowing the the two thousand dollar photocopier up just by turning it off and on really fast every every five seconds after each copy. But uh, yeah, yeah. So it, it did as well. It did as well. <laughs> I don't know what I'm. That's probably, funny. But anyway, uh, let's moving on. Now we've got uh, Angry Birds. We've all heard of Angry Birds. They're they're coming yes. back. They're coming back with a new game. Angry Birds. They're coming out with a movie as well. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But now we've got Angry Birds Space. Team, yeah. Team. How's that going to go? They're just going to float there really slowly. Well, that's right. There's new characters. <laughs> that's right. New, new characters and uh, new, new games and new things. <laughs> Teaming up with NASA, the game will be released on the 22nd of March and will be available oh, for all you guys with the new iPad to download it and, and look at it all in its retina 
Retina Pierce and Glory. Angry Birds. Yeah, on your iPad 3, go. <laughs> Angry Birds Space features 60 initial levels and six new characters, but has but has what Rovio says a, a unique twist in a variable gravity environment. From the weightlessness of space to the gravity of wells of nearby planets, uh, fans can have fun with physics as they try out game the new gameplay possibilities. Uh, the Angry Birds themselves have also transformed into superheroes with new costumes and new abilities. Dun, dun, dun. In November, Angry Birds became the first game to achieve 500 million downloads. Woo! Less Hang on a minute. At a buck a piece, that's a hell of a lot of money. Well, there's still a free version. That's true. Yeah. So the, Everyone think, always upgrades every now and again. They made, they made heaps of yeah. money out of that. Well, I've, I've actually got to the end of the free version, but I've noticed, because I don't play it that often, but I have noticed that every... Uh, now and then there is another version. You get more levels anyway for free. So yeah, 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 that's right. But yeah, so 500 million downloads less than two years after it was released. So um, mm, mm. yeah, good going, good going there. That's good. That's good. Yes, yes. Uh, did you have any other stories, Eric? You wanted? Uh, what have we got here? Uh, NRL says judge the judge erred in the Optus case. So that's going back to court, and the NRL lawyers have said that the judge that made the decision that allowed Optus to keep uh, rec uh, recording and uh, what do you call that? Recording and replaying on their mm. devices was wrong because what the hell would a judge know? Well, this is so true. That's, that's going back to court. Now, this is, this, is also, uh, this has also been thrashed out in America, the same technology. So it's already yes, been correct. thrashed out. It's already been yes. said that it's, uh, it's fine. That's fine. Yes. Uh, so, but why should we? Why should we follow international precedent? Why should we do that? Why would we do that to protect the existing duopolies? Yes, possibly. But, possibly. But Oz Hub Chairman Matt Healy has said that the government cannot afford uh, to be rushed by these demanding by those demanding immediate action. The potential That's right. lost economic opportunity is simply too great, he said. According to this guy Healy, the Optus TV Now service is basically a digital recorder used to record free-to-air television programs. It just happens to be situated in the cloud. Rather That's than right. Yeah, They've rather got to get, they, just, they just don't get it. These people don't understand. Like the judge said in his ruling, this is no different to me recording it at home That's right. and watching it at home for my own private use. The fact that I'm sitting in my car watching mm. it on my phone instead of at home makes no difference whatsoever because I'm using the same technology as I would at home and yep. it's for my private use just like it is at home. I'm not broadcasting it out at the pub. That's right. And 550 other people use it. They're going to lose this and they're going to lose mm. this big. Now, now the, the, the only reason that you would be streaming it on your phone anyway, now or whenever, is because it, that, that live game may be not available where, in you, where you are. Right, so because of the uh, geolog geographical jurisdiction, so you're in... Yeah, that stupid region block for bloody... You know, if the cricket's on in Sydney, it does, it's not live until, you know, 6 o'clock at night. Yeah, or unless it's a sellout, but, which you could yeah, you can maybe understand. Like, you could maybe understand because everyone will just... Yeah, of course, it gets you to the ground, and I understand that, but, you know, come on now. But, but this type of thing, is uh, it, it is ridiculous. If you can record it at home... Why can't you use the, the TV now, Optus' TV now, record it to your own? And because they're not just making one copy of this, they're making individual copies to everyone that pushes the record button. So therefore... That's every, right. So, so, um, but anyway, this uh, guy, Matt Healy from OzHub, he's, uh, he's added that this is exactly the type of productivity-enhancing technological leap that the government has identified and is trying to stimulate with its MBN and digital econ economy policies. Any steps to create new content right needs to be balanced against the risks to innovation and that benefits consumers. Yep. National yep. competitiveness and productivity and in the long term, the interests of the content creators. Agree. Agree 100%. But the government will roll over because they are always, always so weak when it comes to lobbying against mm. them. They will, they're just hopeless. Well, really bad. Because oh, they're going to have to, I think that they're changing, or that where TV now is operating under the time shift clause or the time shift um, section, well, of whatever the, they, yeah, yeah, of the of the Copyright Act, and they're going to have to change the copyright law, which is not going to be good, is it? Well, well, you know, I tell you what, they're going to have to go back a fair bit because copyright goes back to Gutenberg, um, you know, whenever that was, a hundred years ago, or mm. more than you know, five hundred years ago. And for 30 years, the only thing they were printing was the Bible because they didn't know what else mm. to print. 
So re- what are they going to do? Rewrite 500 years of copyright law? You reckon? You reckon when Tony Abbott gets into the into the lodge, he'll sit down. The first thing he'll do, he walks into the room and he'll sit down at his computer and he goes waybackmachine.com. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> what happened here? No, he just, no, it just just bring everything for the last four years since 2007. It's just all just all reve- all erased. Erased. Forget Erase that happened. It. Never happened. Forget that Never happened. Never happened. Oh, yep. look, it's hopeless. Look, look just to, to finish this off, for example, if I recorded the show, the TV, the, the football game at home on my recorder, and then I took that recorder, because there's no way to get it onto a device, okay, so let's be practical, I can't get it onto a device, and then I took that recorder with my TV into my four-wheel drive, which has a 240-volt plug in it and watched it in my car would that be legal it's on my device it's for private use i'm the only one watching it i'm going camping yes you can do that right so, okay so you've recorded now, it on your what on my on my box and i've taken the box with me yes to my holiday house even if it's not my property my holiday house right yep. i don't have a holiday house but if i had one i Plug it in there because I want to watch the footy while I'm away. That's all right. That's not illegal, right? That's not illegal at all. No. So what's the difference? What they're arguing here is, oh, but that's a different device. That doesn't wash anymore in the 21st century. Mm. Well, that's That's what what they're arguing. But you're not watching it on our box. They said, well, we're recording it based on what we're allowed to do. The copyright law also allows you to format. I think it's format shift. So you can take it from like CD to mp3 you can yes. format uh shift you can time shift and i think in the That's olden right. days but what you're talking about is that you have to you watch it once and then you have to delete it i think that's was under the old rules don't have no problem with that because who, who would watch a foot, football game more than once anyway especially if it's mm. just a normal you know round six of the nrl yeah there that's right on well, foxtel i've got the foxtel iq we 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 tape the the shows that we want to watch and when they're finished we delete them yeah. Because it just takes up space. Yeah. Now, the same would go on your phone. The only difference is the device is different. And these people have got to get to the 21st century. We don't use personal recorders, you know, chained, chained to our lounge room chairs to enjoy entertainment anymore. We watch it where we can. And sometimes that's on an iPad, mm. an Android, a Kindle Fire, a phone, mm. an Android phone or whatever. We In the car, at home on holiday. It does, it's, it's now, it's not about... You know, they've got to get it in their head that this is not about, oh, you're not allowed to watch it. What they're saying is you can't watch it anywhere but your place. Well, yeah. And what and in they... this world where everyone is so mobile and but, so transient, you know, no one does that anymore. But what they're saying is if they had their way, they'd be saying, well, every time you watch that, we want you to pay for it. So. Well, we're paying for it anyway in the form of advertisements. Oh, well, that's right. And there's more ads coming to the NRL to hear that story. Oh, yeah, well, that's why everyone's turning off the NRL. Mm. They're better off having less ads and charging more for them, like they do in the, in, in the NFL in America. Mm. You can watch a full NFL game and only see four ads, one per hour. Yes. But yep. they pay big for it. Yeah. And they're better off doing that because people don't switch off. Yeah, yeah, true, true. But anyway, it all comes down to the, the bean counters. You know all about the bean counters. Yeah, but look, I'm I'm a bean counter, but I'm not a narrow-minded bean counter. I know how to make money, mm. and these these idiots at the NRL do not. And that and whoever's running the NRL should should be fired. <laughs> What's his name? Gallup. Gallup. Piss him off. You're gone. You're an idiot. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> All right. So uh, that's just brought us to the end of the show. Uh, we've paid out David yes. Gallup, so we're at the end. <laughs> that's right. Whatever so, your name is, Mr. Gallup, Gallup away. David. That's it. Uh, on your horse and gallop. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that's his new career. Maybe you should he could you should start up romper room and charge people to watch that. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry, I don't know where that memory came from. But uh, but anyway, uh, yes, yeah, so that's the end of the show, episode two hundred and eighty-one. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching on the in the live stream. Thanks, lounge. Thanks for uh, uh, sticking by in there. And oh, there's a few in there tonight. Good on you. Now, uh, yeah, good on you guys. Thank you. You can contact uh, or you can follow Eric on the Twitter, Eric. Franco at Eric Franco with a K, uh, me at Aussie Techheads and Will at Mr Tomkinson. Thanks to TechWebcast.info for their for their show each week before we before we kick off at around seven thirty Queensland time. Bit of a bit of an entree 
to the Aussie Tech Head Show each Thursday night. So we thank you for them. And, uh, yes, thanks to everyone else. Whoever else you might be, thank you. <laughs> we'll see you <laughs> next week. And we're going to have another heap of stories, and I'll tell you how, the, how my Apple TV went if I have had a chance to plug it in. <laughs> and Eric knows that was not going to happen. <laughs> All right. But I'm going to try and get it tomorrow, and I'll let you know how it goes. All right, until next week, it's bye for now. Ta-da! See you guys.